And that's what we hope for, right? That something, there is something better waiting for us. And what is that better? It's God. It's being with God. I have no idea what it'll feel like to walk around with Jesus. No idea. But I am so hopeful of the day that it will come and that people I love who haven't received them yet will and that they too will enjoy it. I can't imagine what it feels like, what Adam and Eve felt walking in the cool of the day in this lavish garden that God made for them to satisfy every whimsical need they could ever have. See, heaven, the new heaven and new earth is a return to Eden. Absent one sneaky, lying, evil serpent. Amen. Because he'll be gone. He'll be removed. He'll be put into the lake of fire forever so that we can be free of his temptation. You want a glimpse of your hope? Revelation 21, 3 and 4 reveals our future hope. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. Talking about the new heaven and earth that will come down from heaven. He will live with them, Jesus, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death, or sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. I thought about that. There'll be no more crying. Does that mean there'll be no more tears? Think about that for a second. If there's no more crying, why do we need tears? Is God going to, like, remove our tear ducts? But then I thought about it. There's been many times in my life when in, in moments of great joy, I've cried. So I believe we'll still have our tears. Kleenex will still be in business. We will still have tears. I believe that. Because we're going to be constantly overcome by joy. We're going to look at moments in our life and we're going to say, ah, that was you, Lord? I know of certain things I see that you clearly did in my life, but that was only the tip of the iceberg. Every moment of my life, you were, you were moving traffic car accidents, cancer, evil men, me, out of the way to protect me. And that'll all come into our realization. I believe there'll be tears of joy because that will impact us. That'll make us realize, oh God, oh how you loved me, for you did so love me. Listen, our future is a place filled with gladness and no more sadness. How about that? What if I told you that the day is coming that you'll never be sad again? I like that. You know, you wake up on a Sunday morning and it's raining. I don't like it. I don't know about you guys. There's something about a sunny Sunday that I just know lifts the spirits of most people. It, there's a little extra Holy Spirit needed to get you out of the bed on a Sunday, rainy, dull morning like this. Something's got to propel you. And I believe the Holy Spirit does. It's this inner desire to hear from God. It's this inner desire to be touched by God. Lord, I need you. i got to come and get my fix. I need to be in your presence. I need to be among, among your people. I need to serve I have to be honest with you guys. When I'm away on a Sunday, I'm out of sorts. I'll, I'll tell my wife, we're going to find a church. <laughs> I, I, I just don't, I feel so abnormal. I feel like something's wrong if I'm not in church on a Sunday. It just, it's just who I am. This time of year isn't filled with joy for everyone. It can be a time of loneliness and sorrow. Placing your hope in the richest relationship you could ever have is the answer for you today. But there's a great challenge in the Christian life. Then the midst of our own hope that we believe in, and it, it propels our life and brings that peace and joy, we got to keep an eye out for those who need the hope of Jesus too. There's many out there today who are walking around hopeless. 
depressed, lonely. Christmas isn't a time of joy for everybody. In broken families and marriages that have been divorced, children away are, are, are estranged. It can, be a, it can be a horrible time. It can be a time for I can't wait to be over because all it is is a reminder to me that there's something wrong in my own life. And it can leave people alone in, in, in hopelessness. And so we need to be vigilant. We need to be, have our eyes wide open. We need to walk around with our head up looking for those who might be in that place of loneliness. And you become the hope by telling them again about Jesus. That as long as you have Jesus, you have hope. Amen? If you have Jesus today, you have hope. No matter what your emotions tell you. They're lying to you. If you have Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior, you have hope. Unthinkable. Unimaginable. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd help us to stay grounded in our hope. Jesus is our future and our hope today. But so often, Lord, we go out into the world and we get all distracted, pulled in all directions, hampered and hindered by our troubles and our responsibilities. Help us, Lord, not to get overwhelmed or too far into the world at this time of the year that we lose sight of what it's all about. Help us as believers, Lord, to keep our eyes fixed on that manger scene and that little powerful ray of hope we see in the babe Jesus. It is a wonderful reality, Lord, that everything you said would happen has happened. And that gives us a lot of confident expectation about everything else you've promised that will come, including your return. And so, Father, I lift up everyone here today and anyone who might hear this message, Lord, that you would remind them of the hope that we have in Jesus and that we might ultimately, Lord, be lifted to a higher state of mind and that we might walk around with joy in our hearts and let people see the hopefulness in our lives that they might want it to. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us to be light right now, wherever we go. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen.